Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video in the Painless Answers series. Now, thank you to all of you that watched the first video, the introduction to this, and to every one of you that came up with an idea. Thank you to those in particular that took the time to kind of write a little bit of context. Uh, this one is to answer a question from a gentleman called Dooley. Now, Dooley, Curl, brilliant name by the way, uh, was asking about how you set up pan and tilt servos uh, in something like iNav and I thought you know what that's a really interesting question so what I'm going to do in this video is answer that for Dooley but also for all of you others that are interested in this now one of the things that's very easy to do is to set up uh, a pan and tilt setup in iNav these days they have made it incredibly simple to do and once you've seen it you'll be like oh that kind of makes a ton of sense Couple of things before we get into there. Uh, there are very simple systems that you can use to directly attach a camera onto a servo, mount it vertically so that the camera is panning. Uh, that is dead easy to set up. I've got things on my Thingiverse pages, link down below. If you just want to set up a pan servo, that's very handy. You can do that super simple with any camera, including DJI HD cameras. The other way you can do it is to have a pan and tilt servo, so as well as the device moving side to side, it also moves up and down. Now I've got one of those on something like my Bixler, and that is a really cool thing to be able to do, because you can look over and you can look down over the side of the plane as well, if it's mounted correctly. Now those things are available in lots of different places. Now I had uh, a question from a gentleman called Bassox online. Bassox was asking about uh, how do you get FPV pan and tilt units if you don't have a 3D printer. My recommendation would be if you are into this hobby and you like customizing and playing with stuff, treat yourself to a 3D printer. I have a friend of mine who has just got into 3D printing. Hello, Adam. Uh, and he is having a whale of a time. He can't believe he managed without one now. And that's how most of us feel, I think. So I would heartily recommend if you haven't already already invested in a cheap and cheerful 3D printer, get one. It will revolutionize your hobby if you're a tinkerer and you like playing. However, if you haven't got a 3D printer and Basox, I absolutely understand that's not what excites some people. You can buy pre-made pan and tilt devices and those pre-made devices are available from usual places. Uh, hobby King used to do a lot of them, but like loads of stuff with Hobby King at the moment, uh, it's probably not in stock. Come on, Hobby King. And then there are places like Banggood who are doing a really good job of having those kind of cheap and cheerful things as well, as well as checking your local supplier. Lots of places have them either with the little servos already installed or without. Personally, I'd get them with the servos installed uh, just because it makes all the linkages and everything simpler set up. It's amazing how many times I've been then playing around trying to uh, get holes in the right places so I can connect everything up. So that's the answer, Basox, for that. Uh, I would go and buy one. Really what I'll probably do is go and buy a 3D printer. If you don't have uh, the ability to do either of those, you can, of course, do things like make one out of balsa wood. You can make some, one, uh, some out of thermoplastic. Anything that you can whittle a little bracket out of or even bits of styrene or carbon fiber. Uh, the, the limits your imagination really. It just requires you to be a little bit creative and be a bit more entrepreneurial with the building skills. Other side of this, before I show you how to do it, uh, bear with it, we'll get to that. I'll put time codes down below because I know some of you don't like all the blurb at the front. There is uh, the other side of the, of the thing here. The elephant in the room, of course, is if you're going to put a pan and tilt setup on your radio, I typically um, tend to have the pan servo just on a slider so I can kind of look left and right as I'm flying. And the other way to do it, of course, is use a head tracker and your goggles. Now, there's loads of different kinds of head trackers about. I have done a lot of videos on head trackers. Again, links down below. There's the Trinity head tracker that's part of the Fat Shark system. Uh, quite expensive but works brilliantly well allows you to plug that in the back of the radio and all that does is that just rather than you move a slider to move the thing left and right the accelerometer in the head tracker does that for you again links down below to how to set that up there's also the hobby king version that i really like actually um again who knows if it's going to be in stock 
but that was a cheap and cheerful one. That's a kind of a professionally made version of the DIY system that was kicking around five, six years ago. And again, all the accelerometer is really doing is rather than you move the two sliders for pan and tilt, it's the accelerometers in the head tracker connected into the back of the radio acting like a trainer radio really uh, that actually as you move is virtually moving those sliders so it's the same so hopefully that's all interesting let's go on the bench i'll show you how to set this up because that bit is probably the easiest part so here we are on the bench ready to set this up now to simulate the pan and tilt servos in something like a pan and tilt fpv mount uh, i've got these two little nine gram servos these were uh, recovered out of a plane that had come to the end of its life but these would be perfect for this i've got an f765 wing here with a little receiver plugged in and i have got it powered from a battery it's important to have the things like this powered from a battery because typically the way it works is the five volts particularly on flight controllers like this to run the servos are being generated by the flight controller itself so you have to have the mains power connected the only other thing before we get into the computer is i have set up my radio so that there is a, uh, an extra couple of uh, switches on here. So what I've done, channel seven, I've connected to the right slider and channel eight, I have connected to the left slider. So pretty standard stuff. Now what would normally happen in something like a head tracker, if you're using that, you would set that up as per those head tracker videos that I talked about at the beginning. Again, links down below. And the, as the head tracker moved, the accelerometer would just drive these values instead of using these little sliders on the side. So with that all said, let's go onto the computer and show you what we need to do. Now, first thing, let's just convince ourselves and prove that the two channels, the two sliders that we've set up here on the radio appear on iNav. So here in iNav, we're in the mixer setting. What we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down and see that at the moment we just have a standard mixer. So this is uh, for a wing configuration. So the elevator and the aileron or roll and pitch are all combined together. I go into the receiver tab. If I slide my right slider, there's channel seven. And if I slide my left slider, there's channel eight, and that's how I've got it set up here on the radio. Now, because we've got those two things, we can connect those two channels, channel seven and channel eight, to the outputs on the flight controller. And that is really, really, really easy to do. If we go into the mixer, and this is one of the really powerful things about iNav, and this is iNav uh, 2.6 on this board. The way it works is we can just add a new mixer rule. We can tell it which servo we want, uh, as three and four are already in use, because one and two, outputs one and two on the flight controller are used for the two motors. Servo three is for one elevon, servo four is for the other, servo five is the next available servo. So we can connect it to lots of different things, including the stabilized output, which is pretty standard. And we can also, if we enable the gimbal stuff in iNav, select it in here. But if we're going to just have uh, it connected to the settings that we've got, the two switches that could be driven by something like a head tracker or discreetly like this. So we just want to be able to move the sliders and maybe look left and right or up and down as we're flying. We just say, I want channel seven. And then we will add another rule. Let's do the next servo, channel six, and that will be channel eight, and we'll save and reboot. Now, what has now happened is channel seven and channel eight from the radio is going to be presented on those two servo pins. So it's just a case of plugging the servos in the right position. So let's just go into the outputs again. And this time we can see that servos five and six are now listed. So as I move the sliders on the radio, there we go. We can actually see it all moving. And again, in here, we can do the cool stuff like we can set the middle position for the servo that we want. Uh, we can set the minimum and maximum travel. So if we are setting up something like a panning 
tilt gimbal. We don't push it too far. So what we need to do is uh, we'll figure out which is which. So at the moment, if that was going to be my pan control, that is output five. What I need to do here on the controller is find S5 and plug my servo in. And now when I move, hopefully you can see that there. When I move the, preferably without losing the connection to the receiver, um, hopefully you can see that the servo is moving as I move that control on the radio. Let me try and put that in a place you can see it better. Hopefully that's better. There we go. So as I move that control, the servo is moving. Similarly, if I wanted to put the tilt servo in, if I was doing it that way, um, and if I was just doing a pan, all I would do is I'd just uh, 3D print a little mount for the camera, screw it on the top, put the camera in it, and that would be a really cute and very, very fast and easy way to do a simple pan servo, which if I'm gonna do anything, that would probably be about as sophisticated as I got. It also means that if you were using a DJI HD system, it doesn't matter what camera you've got. Uh, I also have a couple of mounts for this on my Thingiverse page, so check that out. If we were going to have a tilt servo as well, so let's pretend this is the tilt servo in that setup, we can plug this into S6, which is the other output. And now when I move the other control, sorry, every time I move the radio too close to the receiver, the receiver's bugging out. So using the two controls on the radio, they're all working. And so that's how you would do it. So Dooley, hopefully that answers the question for you. Again, massive thank you for asking. I'm sure lots of other people will be interested in seeing how that is done as well. If you are interested in getting me to answer one of your questions, then do pop them in the comments down below on any of the Painless 360 Answers videos. And where I can, I've got the kit and I've got access to the information. I'll try and answer it for you in a video. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.